So this is the project file, right? We have like a few random circles right there, right there. We have it flying around. It's rendered, it's rendered in an EV. And as you can see, we have a few lights there. One for the background, right, blah, 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 so that, so that like we have an actual depth and shadow and whatnot. And also I have an HD right in the background, just as a fill light, I guess. I think I got this from HDRI Haven, obviously. So let's get to the interesting tidbit. I'm sure you could like, talk about lighting and all that, but I'm sure what you guys came here and what and why I asked you guys to come here is this, is this geometry nodes. As complex as this looks, right, as complex as this looks, it's, it's actually very simple. Like, I know I'm, I know I'm saying that like I'm mumbo jumbo here, saying like the redstone is very simple or or whatever. No, it's actually, it's actually quite simple when you actually, when you break it down. So just, let's isolate the thing and set it to there. So what I did was, as you can see, we have, if you pay, paying attention, there are like three repeating patterns, right? And that's because, and that's the way, that's how I made it look. I make it, I made it repeat. So what I did was, this is, so this is as simple as it gets. It, it scatters a few circles, and then I could, like, control, like, how far, like, the range and what, and whatever. I could control the size, and then I just simply, just duplicate it three times, try and move it to the right, and then just, have the animation symbol just scrolls it there to the right. So that's it. That's 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 what this is. And if you see the background here, this is just like a thing I modeled, very very simple. And then one thing that I actually do is actually animate the X scale so it scales up and scales up and down like an accordion. I think it's some. It's, I think it's like a nice touch for the show, for the thing, make it a bit more lively. But it's like in the in the final. In the final render, it doesn't actually show up that well. But yeah, I think it's still like nice. So you might be wondering, since like I have two versions, one for Co and one for Hifumi, so do I have to like re-render it two times? Since like you know, let's let's re-render this. Let's render it. Let's render this, right? It's about eight. It's about eight seconds per frame, and there are one hundred and sixty frames. So do I have to re-render all of this twice? Well, no. Uh, that's what's coming up next. It's just the compositing. But before we get to the compositing, let's go to the let's go to the the animation here because I think that this is like quite interesting to look. So, uh, what this is like, right? We have Koyagami right here. The image I found for here for me was already transparent, but it, but not for Ko, so I have to manually erase the background. The reason why I didn't do this in Photoshop is because apparently end guns are much more efficient than alpha planes, so I just did that. So here is everything. Right? Yeah, for the co there. I think it's a group because I also have Hifumi right here. Yes, I have her too. And we have text playing out. And you might be thinking that I actually keyframed both the position and the alpha. But what I did, I only keyframed the position. For the alpha, I've set it so that the further away from the destination, the less, like the less opaque it becomes. And that saved me a few steps in this keyframing process because I don't have to like do it twice. I just need to keyframe one thing. And same thing with the bottom part, actually. Like, almost all this. Yes. Also, here. Oh, also, about this Japanese text, right? This is an alpha plane. This is an alpha plane. Why? Oh, you might be wondering, what's an alpha plane? Don't, don't. These things are, this thing is our text object, right? What, why is this an alpha plane? Well, let's, let's type it in, right? Let, let's type it in. Let's try typing it in. Co. Let's try, no, let's try, let's try here for me. Let's type it in. Paste it. As you can see, it doesn't doesn't look right, does it? It looks very glitchy, very buggy, and it, it doesn't look like a, it doesn't look like it. In fact, I I think I already have I think I have the thing already. I just need to uh, hang on. Okay, so it's supposed to look like that, right? It's supposed to look like that, but it looks like this. So that's the reason why I use an alpha plane because apparently Blender does not like this font for some reason. So I just so I just put it in in Photoshop. Yeah, that's why I use. Uh, alpha planes. Also, the the white outline is basically just another mesh at the bottom. It's not it's not it's not too fancy. Also, we have also the UV me part is on the on top. So, so this is the compositing line. Like you can see, we have uh, things there. And when we render it, uh, as you can see, wow, the color changes. Like how how does that work? Well, since like here, as you can see, because this is abstract, when we hue shift it. It doesn't look that weird. It doesn't look off. It just looks different. And that's how I created the like the variations of it. So for this image, I actually wanted a drop shadow for this because well, 
and you go to the layout there are, there are no easy ways to well there are no easy ways to add drop shadows here so what i did was this is like basically the standard way of adding drop shadows in the compositor so we move that a bit blur it make it black set it make it a bit more transparent right and then put an alpha over so it basically overlay it basically overlay it on the top right and then after we after we do this we could just like overlay the background itself and i think it looks and yeah it looks nice with this also before we we like we end off the this video let's just quickly run over the slice of life scene is this was completely made on its own like i didn't plan to put this on the video i just like i just i just think of a really bad dad joke and then one, a friend of mine asked me to like just put this as a bit in that video so i did and it and i'm proud of the joke uh so what is it so this is basically simple you have like the knife animation oh yeah about this it's not physics it's all keyframes you can see this is all keyframes the reason why i did keyframes instead of doing a physics simulation is because well i need more control let's say that like have control over when the thing falls over how the things up how the thing opens and whatnot and also the the actual cutting bit as you can see the like the mesh change how do you do how do i change the mess well uh here we go i just hide the hide the original one at the bottom i just move it boop down and it all animates and it's just a couple of rigs and empties just to actually do it also the material i don't think it's anything to write home about it, really it's just like one white one perler noise and then a color ramp and then and it just and it looks like that and yeah i, I kind of like the woody texture the first plan was actually just to make it plain like that without any without any insights but it's it looks too burnt to me and it's hard to see so i just add a bit of contrast and i think it looks good so i think this caps off like my workflow in blender right 